let's start. Uh, hey everybody, this breakout session uh, is going to uh, address uh, fire safety a bit uh, about the chain of information and a little bit about sustainability connected to it. Uh, we're actually not going to show any software. We're not going to do a demo here. Uh, the intention of this presentation is to talk a little bit about fire safety in BIM uh, and have a, a, a dialogue uh, between different stakeholders in the building process. So for those of you who wants to see more about softwares uh, connected to uh, doing fire safety in BIM, uh, feel free to address us afterwards. Uh, My name is My name is Fredrik Hjort. Uh, I represent the company called Bria. Uh, it's a Swedish based company and we are fire safety consultants uh, mainly in the uh, in Sweden. Uh, some few works in uh, Norway, uh, but uh, as I said mainly in Sweden. Uh, my background is a fire safety yeah, uh, goes uh, quite a few years back, uh, but the thing I'm most proud of is that uh, I and Bia was part of uh, or the company that actually started to say, hey, the fire safety engineers have to be a part of the BIM process. Um, so uh, we started to, to develop uh, a tool, a plugin to Revit. Uh, and uh, a year ago plus, we actually sold it to Symmetry to be able to nourish it and take it to the next step. Uh, I've been a fire safety engineer for the last 30 years, uh, so um, that's the short presentation of me. Uh, by my side, I have Otto. Please introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Otto Bogelak and I come from Finland. I work at Palo which is these days part of BSD, Nordic region, fire safety engineering, and, and a sprinkler and fire safety cooperation. And I've been working for one year as a fire inspector. And at that time, during the first year, I decided it's, it's good to know how to design buildings. And then I went on and moved to work as a fire safety engineer. And this, this is the way I've been doing and working for some past a little bit over 10 years now. It's nice to be here. Nice. Uh, Jonas, you have a, a little bit slightly different. Uh, I, yeah. I started in my career. Jonas Sjöval uh, uh, from Boxberg, Sweden. Uh, we are uh, a construction company. Uh, so I started my career actually as an armor officer. Uh, during my first you know, 13 years, and then I changed my career to the construction. And uh, I started to see the difference between how the leaderships are and how we are communicating with each other or not with each other in the business we're in right now. So I started to look around and see what, what the kind of uh, uh, courses there are to make these things better. So I started uh, slipping into BIM in 2015. And since this, uh, I've been working with BIM. And today I'm head of BIM and BGC at Foxbury. And working in the UK. I'm working, yeah, I'm working from the UK in Sweden, uh, this time. So it's more uh, involved as, as usual uh, in this uh, time of year because now we actually need to work uh, more collaborated than we usually that did before the pandemic time as well. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and uh, third but not uh, least, but last, uh, Inga, please introduce yourself. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Inga Nelson. I'm, I'm working as the facility director at Oslo Science Park. We are in the very early stage uh, in, in BIM, or as a matter of fact, we, we haven't um, started to implement it. We, are, we have had a very um, uh, full testing of our software in BIM based on Revit. And our aim is to build a 
uh, digital twin. And of course, uh, with all the activities in uh, Science Park, we have a lot of tens persons and take care of first maybe money as my, <laughs> working um, mostly with the lease contracts, but also uh, the safety in the building. And um, to be honest, uh, our software we are using is uh, what we call it uh, semi-developed software in various ways. They are very quite, more or less quite close software. They do not connect with each other. And then we have to double and triple the same information a lot of different places. So that's our main main reason. To I'm quite confident that we are going to establish a big digital twin. Thank you very much. So uh, with this, we uh, really try to get all the faces of, uh, of using BIM information, uh, fire safety information in the BIM model. Um, when we're talking about the uh, chain of information, we uh, we are mostly thinking and hoping of this great, great line of information where we have no losses, none at all. I mean, we're designing uh, for five years, uh, designing and building buildings, and then we hand over the key and we hope that the building owners, Inga, is going to be able to use all our information uh, uh, and, and find it uh, directly. Most of us know that that's not the point. Uh, it's more something like this, uh, the design and building phase, uh, information or get lost. Uh, you didn't say that, I didn't hear that uh, and things like that. Um, um, hopefully no losses, but uh, sometimes there are losses too. And if this per, uh, period uh, between minus five years and zero years is, is a zigzag line, uh, it's get even worse. It gets even worse when it comes to handing over the keys. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, I would say that the first step is where we lose is the most information uh, after handing over. Uh, at best, you get a new USB, uh, you get uh, uh, some drawings and things like that, but nobody really knows where to uh, where to find the information. Uh, and it's the same whether it's a, 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 a residential building or Sweden's largest hospital. It's the same thing. Information gets lost. You can't find it. You have to call, you have to ask, you have to find, and you don't find, and you have to recreate the information. Uh, so, so hopefully we are moving towards uh, something that is more of the straight line than, uh, than uh, the other. I was, uh, when uh, when we were starting to uh, to prepare for this presentation, I was looking back into our final server, the typical place where we try to find information when somebody calls you and asks you. Uh, and I found this. Uh, this is a drawing, a fire safety drawings uh, from uh, the middle of. Uh, uh, it's actually started to be built uh, or designed in late uh, 1990s. As you see, it says 2004 because it was redeveloped and everything like that. Here's the fire safety information that we provided to uh, to the design team. And we made a lot of money, <laughs> uh, but that's another thing. Uh, I, I'm a little bit ashamed about showing this, but today with, with new technology, the real new technology, uh, which happens to be called Bluebeam, uh, we start to uh, transform our information uh, to the design team, to the building owners in this way. Yeah, I agree. It's much more good looking than this is. But to be honest, this information is not much more than the information that we uh, that we uh, transfer uh, in uh, early 2000. And this is how the fire safety engineering industry per se is working yet today.
And this information is taken by the architects and all the other design team and are re-implemented into their drawings, into their BIM model and everything like that. So here's some of the design flaws that is actually uh, getting misunderstood even under the design phase. Today, by using uh, the same tools as the other design team has been using for the last 10, 15 years or so, we have a possibility to get to be a part of the design team. Using Revit to implement fire compartmentations or exit routes. or pretty much any kind of information, we can have information that looks the same as, as the old information we did. Because for a, a lot of us that are uh, uh, a little bit above 40 years old, we want it to be just the same way as it was. So we can still produce the drawings, but we have the information. Every line, every color here is attached to uh, the parametrics of walls, doors, or whatever, and can be, be implemented in the same uh, information as uh, all, uh, all the other design teams. So with this said, there is a way to actually take the information into the uh, 21st century. And the most common, uh, the most common reaction uh, that we get when we start to say this, uh, uh, present this is welcome to the 21st century. Uh, because other discipline has, has been working this uh, way before. So this is this is a, a little uh, a little context around the information being able to use the same information. But being in an early stage of this for a couple of years, it's interesting to start to, to uh, talk about uh, what and how we can use the information today from different kinds of standpoints uh, in the process. So that's what we're going to do now. Uh, if anybody uh, of you wants to participate, uh, shout out, raise a hand or anything like that, feel free to do it. Uh, but I'm sort of going to try to start uh, up the uh, conversation. Uh, so by doing that, I'm actually going to start with you, Otto. Why have you started work with BIM in your fire safety design? I think the main reason for our company and in general fire safety engineers throughout the North region is the sole and the same reason to make an impact on the actual design team. Us, us doing the same drawings the sketches by hand or with some kind of video program or doing it with AutoCAD in two-dimensional way was always having present of that misunderstanding between persons, between people, between parties, between authorities and, and building design team. And that's that's one of those things that have been discussed for many, many years. And now as you started, thank you. It, it was nice to have actually and tool to work with. It, it's on our company and for many it's, it's at the beginning stage of learning things and, and moving from one program into a different one is, is an interesting way. <coughs> but but those far safety engineering 3D model program programs they were used in a different way for different kind of things. This one is now for cooperation and this is the one that we're interested in helping and making sure that what we do makes an impact. It doesn't implement into the wrong kind of the, the uh, solution because somebody's building and, and by the time taking building into use, there's always those phone calls when somebody tells that, OK, we've done this and I'm, I'm not sure whether it's done right or wrong. And, and that thing has been discussed many times in most occasions with the design team, with the architect, with the aquatic engineer. And, and it just shows that when, even though it's a simple building, you build many of them and, and 
the same situation, the same kind of problem arises once and again and again. So for us and for me, it's it's, it's interesting and it could, it's a good opportunity to provide something that goes from designer to designer without having those mixed uh, implementations, implements, implementations of Parsec and others. So, so have, have all your customers embraced it and said, yes, we want to do it, let's start it now? Uh, Farsage is always the same kind of conversation. One says that Farsage is important thing, and of course it is, but then how much are you going to pay for it? It's the second question, that's more, more difficult one. At this time, uh, what we're doing is, is not, it's not the high end of use of BIM models. It's more about these basic things, and that's the one that I think I'm excited and, and most of my customers are also excited and interested about. So, yeah, in, in that way, it's, it's always we have to discuss because there's no strict way of doing fire safety in Finland. Designing can be on customer what to do and how to do it. And, and that's, that's the thing that we have to consider what we want to do. So, so what from those customers that you have started with this, what, what, are, what are their uh, how do they respond? Um, I think some architects are like excited about them getting to pay attention on those things that matter to them more about the actual design thing, things and us taking responsibility 100% for those fire safety things. For example, determining the exact door so that this door is pirated in a specific way, or this window is located so that it has, has to be done in a specific way. It has to have a pirating of something. And that was previously, it was us written in the documents. And then the architect was reading the document and putting it there and us checking it again. But in that way, we weren't truly there. And the architect, in one way, is interested, but has a lot more to do. Than just typing in what the fire safety consultant told that it should be written here. So, so they, they're not uh, they're not worried that you're taking their job. Um, they never men not mentioned that to me. I think they're more excited because um, the work is done by us, nevertheless. So I don't think that it's away from them. I, I think that in simple simple construction sites. Or, or on simple buildings, these fire safety things are, are they could be done by architects, but the architect does might not know that well all the minor adjustments or the possibilities. For us taking that responsibility and looking it through, the outcome is more throughout thought, not just their put yeah. in a way it fulfills the minimum requirement. And that's that's where I think this program is is good tool to have. And, and you were you were raising your hand. Yeah, so I get all the excitement to hear about how you collaborate with the architects and other stakeholders in in the projects, and that's fantastic. Because I'm struggling with how how could we actually work together in in our design projects that we do, and how do we do the collaborations more together? Because as we do it today, we do it in the traditional way. We actually. We get the paper, as you said, we get the paper from, from the fire and safety engineer, and that it will be read in by another person who so is uh, interpreted in, in their kind of way, in, in the best uh, collaborative way. And the fire engineer also look at the papers that they have drawn afterward. So that is the, the, the traditional way. And, yeah. and when we have this kind of tool with the, uh, when we can collaborate in the same environment, so that, that uh, my my question is how how uh, should we do that and uh, and how uh, how mature are we to do uh, to work like that in because I, I don't see that uh, I, in, so, so yeah. how, how mature is the uh, building industry in working this way? As, uh, in my perspective, from from our uh, point of view, we we don't work like that. I've been aiming for working like this for a couple of years right now, and, and I still haven't found, I, just to say that we 
we're always putting uh, uh, new groups of, of people every time in, in every project because they are uh, everyone is bidding on the project and then we're going to put them together in, in a short period of time and after six months we're finished with each other and so that is a problem because we don't evolve with each other and uh, so we in our company actually has been thinking about okay what we can we do instead and keep it in-house is to keep keep the knowledge, keep the know-how, and keep the workflow going, and, 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 and that sort of way, uh, keep it going in, in the right direction. So in my point of view, we can't work like that because we don't have the consultants uh, thinking like that. So you're, you're not there yet. No, no, I, I, I need consultants, yeah. uh, the discipline, the technical disciplines, actually to embrace the new, uh, uh, work uh, uh, methods uh, and, and think about that a little bit how we talked about it earlier today about thinking uh, how we could work together and how we solve problems together and that is the way that we should thinking and, and uh, embrace and every discipline needs to think about that how we can participate in to making a better place in the construction and industry uh, sorry Ingrid, uh... Yeah, I had a few words. Yeah, yes, yeah, sure. Um, back, back to your first slide, uh, and um, when you, you have the handover from the uh, huge projects that you are making, and I, well, I see that we have this kind of problem that the data quality and quality is declining s steeply uh, when we are taking over due to different reasons, but. Uh, I think one reason that we, we as an operator, we are going to use this building for maybe 100 years, but <laughs> haven't done uh, or implemented good enough specifications. And also uh, the software we are using uh, have another, um, doesn't implement the project information mm -hmm. uh, very good. So then we are starting from the bottom and from uh, upwards after the project has delivered the documentation. And that's the reason we, 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 are, we have decided uh, yeah, more or less to implement our digital twin based on the, the, the Revit. But of course, the, we, we are not using Revit in, a, in our daily operation. That's too complex or too expensive. So we need a smart kind of uh, viewer or more on a viewer as a, you have to have another kind of software uh, follow up the information from the project uh, from Revit into another kind of software okay. and we are in that phase now and we have tested out uh, software here from um, uh, Symmetry and we, we find it it's more more or less more than best in the market, so we maybe will buy it, I'm not sure, but then hopefully we have one access into the information you need to have in the building. It's not only safety information, it's uh, of course information about tenants, information about ventilation, but we have to start uh, with something. So from our point, we are starting with the tenants, uh, areas. We have um, a, a, an existing software today that handles quite good, but it doesn't correspond with the open software. And also, and, and the fire safety, that's our main starting points from our point of view, and then we will expand with our other uh, things in, in this. Uh, possibilities we will have. That. So, well, that's and our, our uh, that's uh, our starting point. Uh, we have a question in the in the yes. audience. For Hello, a moment. my name is Magnus. I work in Ramberg. I'm a fire engineer, yeah. and we are using the software uh, with uh, great success. Uh, we have several projects where we have a multidiscipline collaboration mm -hmm. with architects, and I think we're using it to its full extent. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I have some uh, challenges I want to address. But first, I just want to have a question for you. You said 
uh, fire safety information uh, mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the user phase of the building. Mm -hmm. yeah. What kind of uh, fire safety information do you? Uh, we, what kind of software do you have? Or no, what, kind, what, what kind of information uh, do you need or do you use in your daily use? Uh, well, uh, of course, it's, it's based on the uh, uh, regulations and the, the uh, escape uh, fire drawings, uh, technical fire drawings, a lot of um, graphical information connected with the uh, database information in, in the um, building. That, that's the information we are using, but our existing software is not uh, talking with the project uh, software. And then we have to start from the beginning, and then we yeah, are having an over takeover. And it's really expensive, and we are both losing data quality. And well, that's not the future. So therefore, we are going over to the, the digital twin based on BIM, but we need a um, viewer, a good viewer, and more than that is, is to have the project information also in the viewer and all of transferred from uh, the BIM software. Or I read it. Is, is that a challenge in terms of information? I mean, I guess that you have uh, have uh, uh, mechanical uh, engineers uh, doing uh, different things. They're going to do the checklists and things like that, uh, uh, as well as you have lease uh, lease managers. And uh, like, uh, is, is that something that you're uh, that, that are worrying you that, that there are, you, you have to have so much information uh, that is capable uh, for uh, for different kind of uh, different kind of roles? Uh, it's a very challenging today because we have different kind of software or maybe not uh, good enough software to follow it up. But we have tested out uh, Revit and uh, FM Access and we see that we can follow it much better. Um, I'm quite sure it will not be perfect, but it's much better because we have the information in one place. And of course, it's very important to have the specification when we are updating the information, who is updating the information. We are not sure, um, shall we do it by ourselves? I don't think so because the user interface is quite co complex in, in the Revit. So hopefully I think that you will uh, use people like you. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to give the word back to this just shortly, but, but I, I, you, you said something about updating. Is, is, is there, I mean, the more information you put into the model or into a set of management system, the more information you have to uh, to sure. uh, keep and manage and update. Uh, that's that's uh, right. And and when um, when you are looking at oh, we have to have everything into this model, uh, and then it's too much. You can't handle it. But we have started with the information we we are. Today, Wallace is uh, Wallace is on track, and and in specific way, it's the safety information. We have also a lot of laboratories uh, with different kind of aspects, also gas and um, information about uh, uh, safety information. And together with to be in business, we need to have. Uh, control over the tenants and safety. Otherwise, we will, will not be able to run uh, social science safety in a uh, right way. I'm, go I'm going to wrap up the uh, information update with a question to you, Jonas. Mm -hmm. uh, even though you're working uh, with, with Swedish, Swedish project mm -hmm. in, in the United Kingdom, I guess that you hear the buzz all the time about the golden thread of information oh, yeah. and ground oh, yeah. fire. Uh, uh, do you have any reflection on all the information that will be required in terms of fire safety in the UK? Yep, the UK is, uh, has reg uh, regulated the information very strictly today, and they have uh, updated with the uh, British standards that is uh, stating out who is actually going to handle which information 
and that is going to uh, survive of uh, going the whole uh, building life cycle as well. So they were sorry about that. But uh, I need to notice that the business itself also have some questions about that and are questioning on, on the British standard as it is today. So it's involving as a, as a thing. Because it seems to be uh, down to knobs and bolts. Uh, you, you have to sort of know every information. Yeah, you do, and and what, and what I see is it's it's a lot of information management actually. So you, you need you need to know who is actually manage that information and how. And so so that is and and it's from the beginning, from the design process all the way into the facility management, and all the stakeholders during the whole process have different roles. And what I'm concerning about is. Who is going to manage all the stakeholders and, and making sure that they are actually delivering the information that is needed during the time? So, who is the ownership of the information? That question is not solved yet. So, it's information overload. It is. Yeah, I think so. Absolutely. They want everything, but they don't know uh, how to maintain the information in a, in a proper way. If you are very detailed, Level, it, it will be too much. I will open up, Magnus. You have you have had uh, another question, so uh, yeah, it's more just uh, uh, to uh, talk about the challenge because when uh, we're as fire engineers are in a multidisciplinary uh, project, uh, the architects and the civil disciplines are very happy with the way we uh, approach uh, fire uh, design in in uh, in Denver. And it works very well, but the challenge is uh, in actually the bid phase mm. because everyone is bidding according to their uh, um, the way they always do it. So uh, when we uh, then it's just not enough resources for fire engineering to do a good uh, bid design. So uh, what we're looking at now is uh, discussing with architects, discussing with other disciplines. How can we maybe get in front of that in uh, in bids, perhaps in order to uh, Maybe divide the resources because uh, in in traditional fire design uh, you have much less uh, the, the hours basically to to do uh, the, the traditional design. So, uh, so so what you're saying is if you do it the, the right way, it's going to be more expensive when you uh, when you do the design. The design. It's going to be less expensive, but it's going to be more expensive for fire. Yeah. So in total, it's going you're going to save money in total uh, on the project. Uh, because you're not doing things double, you're doing things correct the first time around, and so there's a lot of upside, and you actually save money. So, so, what, so why don't uh, the companies that you're bidding to understand that? Because when the when uh, when the competition is out there, and all the uh, the disciplines, especially the maybe the, also the architects are from a different company, and the bids come in quickly, bam, bam, bam. There's no time to uh, coordinate the bids. So then, so then the bids are just the classic, yeah, uh, the same as last time and this, uh, yes. the, the, the time before. Yeah. And then we start the project and then everyone agrees that this is a good way to do it. But then fire loses money. So so that's a challenge uh, yeah. we're working on right now. Uh, so the, 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 I mean, the technical part is really it's really, really good. And yeah, but there's a way to go on the on the contract. actually. I have a thought about that. Uh, so you're saying that uh, doing this will cost more money to do that, right? Yeah, in total, less money. But less money in total for the whole project. Yeah. But for you as a fire and safety engineer, yeah. it will cost more money. Yeah, so that is a problem. <laughs> so, yeah, but in, in what, uh, because uh, uh, my my executives, they say you can't, it shouldn't cost more. It should be uh, this, and, and the fire safety engineers should cost at this point. Uh, that that is what you have as a budget to work with. So that is what I'm working with all the time. So I'm struggling with my secretaries and I'm struggling with the consultants and talk with. But what I'm thinking about this one is actually this is a this is a new tool for us. We, yeah, it's a, it's a startup for us to work with, and yeah, we need to learn the tool and work with it. But I think. Instead of pen and paper, this is this is the tool that we're going to work with instead. So 
in if you're looking at in longer pro in perspective, shouldn't this be uh, the exchange for pen and paper? This will be the normal tool, and and in that way, it the cost will be the same as it was before. It's just an upstart cost. That's it. I'm going to return to the overall cost rule. All right. <laughs> of course. The fire engineer has to be uh, involved more in the project. All right. So they, we have we have to work in a different way yeah. because we we, we are uh, we've been working uh, like outsiders in a little bit. We, we put down the premise, piece of paper, uh, either handwritten or with a CAD tool, and we we give it to the project and then we say good luck. And then they, ask us and if you have any questions. Yeah, yeah, we do that. Uh, yes. yeah, but if you are involved, like any other discipline, like, uh, like ventilation, electrical, uh, it would be a much better project. Uh, but that that's going to require time from us. Yeah. But I think that's the right way to go, and you will save a lot of money, especially uh, regarding uh, mistakes done in uh, in the design phase, but also in construction phase. So it's yeah, it's it's a new way of working as a fire engineer. So it's not just a new way of actually doing the sign, but it's actually a new way of thinking. So what I'm um, so may I just sure. yeah sure. So what I'm thinking about because it's all about money, right? And so uh, how how big needs the project needs to be uh, in the revenue to actually make money in the whole project then? So you understand the question that I'm struggling with because I I and Smaller projects, maybe we shouldn't do the this kind of BIM thing, you know. It's why don't you use the pen and paper and blue beam. That's we've done it in several years, you know. We can that we do that. It's simple. Here you go. That's it. If if, if I could say a few words yeah. on that, I, I, I would say that you would never ask the MFP engineer if he could do the uh, the kindergarten uh, on with pen. No, paper. that's right. You would say yeah. go ahead and draw it. I, I yes. think it's I. I I think it's a it's a, a way of mindset actually. Uh, uh, Otto first and then Inga. Otto. Yeah. Regarding that, um, how much does it cost to make a fire safety engineer to do an actual on addition beam fire safety model? Mm -hmm. Is somewhat related how you apply the building permit when we we're going to Barst in Finland, the world where one can apply building permit through BIM model. And when that is the stage and what when that is the way to do things, I think then the discussion in one way is is not that much anymore about whether it costs five thousand euros more or any bigger project. It, it might cost a lot more. But but in, in one way that that's the limiting situation now as we we need those two dimensional drawing and the design paper, nine pages, ten pages, something. So in the basic information, if you can have it on the model, that way it works things forward. And and on top of that, also the end user is is there also. If the end user tells that we need this information and the project starts from the get-go, from the first day, knowing that the end user will be using this information, then then the discussion is not that much, it's not that difficult anymore, because we all know that. The first five years of design and building is a lot less than the 100 years used, and, and I think that's in one way the solution. But it's not in my hands. It's uh, these days I'm just trying to convince people like you. No, we can do it a different way, and 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 if we take multiple small building projects, we do all the same projects, and and in your kind of organization. The ones who like do mistakes, they move away from the company, and then the next guy comes, and the next guy does the same mistake, yeah. and it's always the same fire consultant <laughs> who comes and tells how you fix this. And so I find the right one, <laughs> perhaps, <laughs> or at least know who to call. But, yeah, but, but it, in one way, it, it, it's there's always always this. Uh, those designers they know and, and using the same design team has its benefits. Always it, it, it might not evolve in that much, but it, it does have some benefits working with mm. design teams. 
Yeah, I, I can follow up what you said about the end user and uh, of course, um, well, we have a lot of experience uh, with the uh, consultants using paper or uh, 2D, 2D software that not correspondent with uh, ours and our, our um, well, challenge is that we are not getting this right documentation for safety and fire safety and in the next round we do not cannot deliver the right safety for the users and the value of the building and that's very serious when, when, we, when we have a gap and now the last six months we have tried out um, um, and we, we find out that the information is more um, Transparent. You, you see, oh, uh, here is the firewall. Oh, uh, that's very important when we are doing work. We, we, we have to follow that rule or, or a door more closely, but it's really a regulation here. And it's about the safety for the building and the users. And therefore, we need better tools. So that's our motivation. And I think also in, in total, we will uh, run quite uh, cost efficient uh, with this kind of right to tools if we are able to have the, uh, the right software or the, and also the right uh, persons helping us. And we also need um, a minimum of, of, uh, of um, education to follow it up. That's important for us. Uh, so, well, so, so in, in terms of sustainability, where are we with this in terms of sustainability? Anyone want to say a few words on that? So just working with BIM, we, we will work more efficient together. We will uh, have the lack of uh, uh, the failure of information uh, because we see the information together if we have the right manager to look at that. So just working with BIM and information management and all that kind of stuff, that will help us be more efficient. And be more efficient will be better for the project in, in overall as well. Because the, avoid, because the mistakes that we are usually doing outside, if we are more collaborated, then we're going to lack the mistakes that we usually did before. So working with BIM will be sustainable. That's ours. Yeah. Absolutely, and that's Let that. Me. That is true, but I mean, I've seen that Let for real. And it's not. It's not just in paper. I've seen it for real. It's about sustainability and uh, and fire design. Uh, uh, we're also looking a lot into that uh, with regards to use of different materials and all these uh, carbon limiting uh, measures. And um, being involved in the design process uh, more through BIM, for instance, uh, for uh, fire engineers. Uh, also opens up a lot of opportunities to for uh, material discussions because uh, we see time and time again that uh, uh, materials are being used on uh, just on uh, experience and uh, yeah. not being challenged yeah. uh, and and it's also because of higher experience because of the discipline says we need concrete here or we need this kind of material here because that's what we've been using the last 20 yeah. years and, and it's probably the fire yeah that's what and, it's, and, and it's probably because of fire. So if, if uh, again, if we, uh, we want to be a uh, part of the discussion more, and I think this uh, this is a good way to do that. Make more sustainable buildings. I'm going to stop wrap up a little bit by asking you, uh, giving you 60 seconds to say something about what you see in the future of uh, working with uh, fire safety in. Uh, in BIM with uh, the uh, BIM information. Before what to see days when I talk with the younger ones, consultants and with the old other participants and telling the stories of, about those handwritten and clay skates and everything that we used to do and then knowing that the next generation knows how to use these programs a lot better than actually these ones doing the chase these days. And knowing how to use it, where to use it, having that discussion is it's I'm looking forward for that. 
two months. Yeah. So in the in the short uh, time period, I'm looking forward to work uh, close by my consultants that I am hiring for the projects, and and we do that in in overall in in, in the win model that we actually have a good use for as well. And for the long term, I'm. I'm longer for the information that you want from us to give you so that we can do a great delivery for you in the in, in the next phase of the, this project. So yes, that is, that is my wish. Yes, and then also that we are able to take the handover. That means that we need to have a certain level in our organization when we are running complex buildings. That's of course a challenge, but of course, we have to have the safety in the buildings, and to have that, the yeah, qualifications, software, follow up, helping from you guys. Everybody needs a job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, before we uh, before we end up, uh, I uh, and we we're going to give a room for uh, a few other questions uh, if wanted. Uh, I would like to say. Uh, that a good way to start is by using this uh, old saying, because there are, there are so much information that you can put inside the uh, the B model, handles everything, uh, all the information that will give the overload. So if you are going to start using uh, uh, fire safety in the BIM model. How do you eat an elephant? Bit by bit. Take small steps uh, because that's the easiest way to find uh, the way. And it tends to be when you when you got taste for the elephant, you want more. So uh, that's uh, that that's a piece of advice advice to uh, to move forward. Uh, with that, I would like to open up and see if there's any final questions. No. Uh, with that, I start calling. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at Tassa here. No questions here. No questions. Crystal clear. Uh, question. Yes. Yes, please. Uh, what uh, what does the future look like in uh, in this tool? What do you look ahead and what's your what's your dream? Dream fire tool GPT. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's the, the, I mean I'm so surprised that nobody has said it. It's like the buzzword of buzzwords <laughs> right now. Uh, so no, I, I mean uh, I'm going to retire in fifteen years or so. Uh, so I hope that we still need fire engineers for those 15 years. <laughs> uh, no, not joking. I think that there are uh, so many uh, possibilities uh, to to be able to to uh, collaborate. I think the 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 most exciting thing so far is that we've actually started to collaborate, and that the users, including Bria, uh, that that are users today, uh, are feedbacking and say, could you do that? It's when people ask, could you could could you do that too? I mean, there, there's question on on uh, traveling distances. There, there are questions on, on uh, seeing if if uh, fire compartments are quote unquote leaking. Uh, if you if you don't uh, in the staircase or stairwell or, or anything like that. So I think uh, small step moving us uh, closer to to give our uh, our uh, friends more information, uh, better information and updated information. So uh, being fire GPT or just more uh, relevant information. Uh, pick a choice. OK, uh, thank you very much for coming here and listening. I would really like to thank Otto, Jonas and Inger for being here. Uh, I forgot the flowers on the hotel room, but <laughs> we are done. Uh, thanks a lot. Thank you, Stockholm, uh, for joining this session too.